While the process of running the calibration of wizard steps 3 and 4 is the same, the way in which the light lock bead is measured is different. Light lock applies a triangular shaped bead that is a lower profile and covers a surface of about 300 thousandths wide. Rather than applying a bulky rectangular bead on the side of the spacer that only covers about 156 thousandths of an inch. Advantages of the light lock nozzle tips include sealant material reduction, a reduction of entrapped air along the original wet out contact point, a wider processing window, and it's easy to upgrade on all GED smart extruder application systems. Prior to running this step, it is important to make sure that all leaks in the sealant system are repaired. If necessary, refer to GED documents APN 85 and 86 for rebuilding the bottom and side heads. Also, verify that the machine is set up mechanically, that the side heads and conveyors are to the proper width and aligned to the center of the conveyors so that the spacer travels smoothly through them without rubbing on the nozzle tips. Once the machine is warmed up to operating temperature, run a few spacers through the machine to build pressure in the system and verify the tracking of the spacer through the nozzle tips. Move the conveyors to the maximum width. Remove the hold down caps from the side nozzle tips. Remove the three screws that secure each of the side nozzle tips and remove the tips. Clean the bottom nozzle plate and the tip mounting surface of the side heads thoroughly. Install the light lock nozzle tips, but leave the screws about a quarter turn loose. In the conveyor width screen, jog the side nozzle heads in a few times. This combined with the pressure on the side heads should raise the side nozzles up off the bottom nozzle plate. Using a large flat screwdriver, push the nozzle tip towards the exit end of the extruder, then hold down on them while you tighten the three screws that secure the side nozzle tip. Repeat this on the opposite side. This will seat the side nozzle tips against the bottom nozzle plate, minimizing any leakage between the two nozzles. Before replacing the hold down caps, go to step 2 of the calibration wizard and run the step to verify the home offset is correct. Set the conveyor width and manually jog a spacer through the extruder, watching how it tracks and making sure it doesn't rub against either of the side nozzle tips. If it rubs slightly, it may be corrected by angling the hold down wheels to control the tracking. If it is rubbing hard, the side heads and conveyors are not aligned and it will be necessary to run the alignment portion of APN 99. If realignment was necessary, verify the home offset by rerunning step 2 of the calibration wizard. Once the spacer travels through the center of the side nozzles without rubbing the nozzle tips, replace the hold down caps. Continue to step 3 of the calibration wizard. Follow the instructions in step 3. When closing the heads, do not tighten the stop bolt as this will jam the stem into the seat, damaging them. 
Stop as soon as the stop bolt touches the stem, then open one and a quarter turns. Do the same on the non-operator side. Press the seal and test button and run a spacer through the machine. When it comes to measuring the sealant thickness, this must be done with the GED sealant thickness gauge, shown here, and is outlined in APN 218. While the sealant is warm, press the gauge into the peak of the side bead until the gauge is firmly against the side of the spacer. It doesn't matter which side of the spacer is used, but be consistent when measuring. Using a lighted background, read down the scale and locate the last tooth that is in contact with the sealant. The thickness of the sealant is between the last tooth that is in contact with the sealant and the next tooth. The desired thickness is generally between 40 and 45 thousandths, depending upon what the press out thickness is. Typically a bead height of 40 thousandths is good for a 15 thousandths press out, whereas a 45 thousandths bead will work better for a 20 thousandths thickness press out. A 40 thousandths bead will generally have a slight concavity to the bead, which if the press out is wider, may not fully fill the space between the spacer and the glass. Press the up and down arrow keys to increase or decrease the application until the desired thickness is achieved. Once one side of the spacer has a good application, check the opposite side to see if it's balanced. If they are not balanced, look at the current pressure. While it should be between 600 to 1200 PSI, I prefer to be somewhere midway, around 800 to 900 PSI. Opening a head will lower the pressure and draw material from the opposite side, while closing a head will raise the pressure and push more material to the opposite side. Keeping this in mind, open or close the heads accordingly to balance the sides and get the pressure in that 800 to 900 PSI range, and increase or decrease the gear pump speed to apply more or less material by using the arrow keys. Work step three until you have the desired application. The pressure is good and the sides are balanced. Before continuing, Document your current head settings. How many turns open is the operator side nozzle? And how far open is the non-operator side nozzle? If you're not sure where the heads are set, carefully loosen the jam nuts on each head and meticulously count the number of turns as they're closed. Then open them back exactly to where they were. Lock the jam nuts and document the head settings. When you have completed running these or any steps of the calibration wizard, it is highly recommended that you back up your parameters. This backup is based upon the current head settings, so in the event that the system needs restored, the head should be set back to where these settings were for proper restoration of the system. This will make restoring the system quicker and more accurate and minimize machine downtime. Once again, verify all is good, then press the side heads calibrated button Carry the side head pressure to the next step where it is needed to run step 4. This version of when extrude adds 50 psi to the side head pressure, and this becomes the target pressure for step 4. Older versions of when extrude just display the side head pressure. Step 4 will calibrate the material applied to the bottom of the spacer, which is dependent upon the frequency setting of the gear pump and the conveyor speed. Close the bottom head, counting the number of turns in. Again, do not tighten the stop bolt, as this will damage the stem and the seat. The bottom nozzle was open about one and a quarter turns. I'm going to set it back to where it was, because the head has been in service and wasn't open past the maximum of four turns. If the bottom nozzle had been open more than four turns, or if the head was just rebuilt, then I would have set it to about two and a half turns, which is a default opening for about a 50 thousandths application on the bottom. 
Remember the maximum nozzle opening should be no more than four turns open on the bottom and three turns open on the sides. Opening more than the maximum is not controlling the flow. Instead, the material will follow the path of least resistance. Typically, the bottom thickness should be between 35 to 55 thousandths. Ideally, around 40 to 45 thousandths is good. Too much material on the bottom creates handling issues, and the sealant will stick to the belt more. Enter the desired material thickness and press the sealant test button. Measure the bottom sealant thickness with calipers and enter the value in the material thickness box. The use of calipers is necessary because the material thickness must be within plus or minus two thousandths of the desired thickness and the accuracy cannot be measured with the sealant thickness gauge. The software will look at the current pressure and the measured thickness and run the information through an algorithm which will tell you what to do next. Just follow the instructions. Run another spacer, measure the bottom thickness, and enter the measured value. Follow the instructions on the screen. Repeat this process until the material thickness and pressure are within acceptable range. Accept Settings. Also press the Accept Settings button in the lower right hand corner of the screen. As with the side heads, document the current bottom head setting. Back up your machine parameters. If necessary, reference the user guide for the instructions on backing up parameters for your machine type. 